In Solo Leveling Rise, you want to deal as much damage as possible, and for today's video, we're going to talk about some of the best ways for you to increase your overall damage, whether it's with Sung Janu here or with one of the other hunters. All right, guys, before I do get into the video, be sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for more content, and hit that thumbs up. We are dead set on trying to hit our light goal for today of 500, so if the video is below that, be sure to help us hit it. I'd appreciate it big time, and thank you in advance. All right, so first thing I wanna kinda of mention is there are a number of ways that you can improve. Uh, we're gonna start off with artifact set. So artifacts, obviously, obviously, obviously are gonna be improving your overall damage, depending on which set you have, depending on which uh, which, which, the, the, which passives you're getting from those, things like that. The extra stats, I should say, instead of passives, you are going to be able to really, really spike your damage. Some of the better ones are gonna to be toughness here for the critical, especially with a critical set on Sung Janu or critical investment in his overall stats more than I probably have, things like that. You want to make sure that you are focusing on that. Other sets are really strong too, like the attack increase one that ignores defense. That's really strong. But I think critical has a very high ceiling, and that's the one you want to kind of focus on. Obviously, you're also going to hit a huge power gap whenever you are or power up when you unlock the right half of these, especially when you unlock the four piece sets because you get two at a time, right? So overall, though, Expert is awesome for the full critical, but things like Executioner is going to be really, really, really strong. Now, in the case of Song Jinu, he has a couple more opportunities to get stronger in that he can do two weapons. <laughs> he's got customizable skills. He's got customizable stats. He's got Blessing Stones. So he's just the only character in the game that can do any of that stuff. So he's just like insane. So, anywho, if you got a really strong Blessing Stone, you'll lock those for extra damage. That's totally up to you. Some of them are good, like this one here. Really, really lends itself well to some of the other attacks that you can do with, like, Shadow Step, putting you directly behind them, or other skills that can teleport you behind with a counter or weird things like that. Um, but other than that, though, when it comes to your skills, next quick tip is to level up your skills. So... Here we have the skills that we have, and you can actually hit the level up button to improve them, and the damage also goes up. In terms of this, I would mainly focus on the ultimate skill first and foremost. That's the most important one, in my opinion, to level up. Also, you can level up the death stance and the multi-strike. Those are the most important ones overall. Now, they're not the they're not they're they're important for various reasons, but they're not the heaviest hitter ones. Uh, there are some that hit more and do more, like mutilate or vital strike are two of the better ones for more damage. You have uh, the the um, commander's touch here for crowd control, things like that. So that's what you would want to focus on. Now, I want to kind of shuffle back a little bit to the beginning of this with Sung Janu and the stat spread. Uh, so with the stats, if you hit the magnifying glass here, you want to have his precision at a high number. The way I will break down the stats for you is that you want to invest highly in precision or perception. It's funny that they have these just these two words here. It could just be one, right? And then a description of what it does. Anyway, uh, you know why perception is here is because that's a stat in the series. Anyway, so what this does is one of them. So precision increases your baseline damage. It takes your, your minimum damage you can do from being, let's just say 50 to 500. Let's say that. That's that's just a random number, but it takes the minimum amount of damage you can do up. It brings your floor higher. Strength improves your ceiling. So say your maximum was 957. Well, if you invest this stat more, that maximum goes up and up and up. And then criticals are obviously, as their name implies, the critical hit. So they, are, they by themselves exceed the ceiling anyway because that's what they're designed to do in any game. And then critical damage also, you know, important. I don't invest much in these other two. I don't think any stats useless, but I don't invest very much in these two. Uh, I think that with Shadow Step in particular, increasing your overall damage output by reducing the defense, you just want to invest in the three that I've invested in. So I talked about precision in the magnifying glass. You want to have this number at 90 minimum. Honestly, I think you should go to 95 because again, the ceiling or the, the floor being higher is very important. And then you can invest heavily in strength after that. Now, I will offer a recommendation that if you've got very strong weapons or very duped out weapons, like you're basically if you're a spender, probably are extremely lucky, you can shift your focus away from strength and into agility. But if you're just anybody else, like with stuff like me or just a budget player, free player, in my opinion, I think you go strength, perception, and then agility is third. But again, you can shift strength to being third after that. Otherwise, if you do have investment in your characters beyond what I have, things like that. Or maybe you just got crazy lucky with the weapon, right? So outside of that, let's move on and talk about uh, some of the other things that we have as it pertains to some of the other characters. Oh, by the way, really quick. Weapons themselves, uh, they have stats, right? They have stats. But when weapons have dupes, 
they pick up a, a precision stat. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's kind of strong. So one way to cheese this, by the way, if you don't have a bunch of SSR weapons, things like that, is you can use duped out SR weapons if you have those. See, 1750, it's much less than the SSR that has two, right? But nonetheless, it's still better than zero, right? And so when you put these on, I mean, my number was at 90%. Let's see what it jumps to with just another weapon that has precision. So 90.8. If I take the plum off and put this one on with 1750 flat added, it jumps to like 92% probably. 95%. <laughs> so that is extremely strong. Extremely strong. So... Again, it raises the floor. So what you can do to cheese that is, again, if you don't have two SSR weapons, or even if you have two SSR weapons, if I'm being honest with you, one main and then putting a secondary sub weapon that's a heavily dupe invested one, advanced as they call in this game, that would be really good. And you also can go down to these R weapons. And again, not going to be the greatest thing. Find one that fits your play style. They're not going to do the craziest damage, but they'll bring your overall floor up to where your ults will hit harder. All of your stuff will do just more damage overall in general. So that's really good for you. I guess I shouldn't really say your ults would hit harder. I guess they just wouldn't do less damage. It's kind of a weird thing with the ult. Anyway, let's move on from here and talk about some other stuff as it pertains to the actual other hunters in the game. <laughs> so the thing about them is they get some of the same access in terms of artifacts, things like that, uh, that you can do to advance them. Their level goes up in relation to Sung Janu's level. Uh, unfortunately, you have to invest in it. So they're level one or whatever level by default. You've got to raise them up and keep them up to date with that. So if you see that they're below that level, you can invest in them. Quick word of warning, as you get higher and higher, it starts costing a lot of gold apparently <laughs> so like i mean just for example it's 14 there 30 so on and so forth this is just to go five levels that's eighty thousand gold so that's just one hunter if i were to take a level 100 let's see no 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 let's let's go max go max damn it why didn't you just go max go max why can't i hold this button oh it does hold never mind Four hundred thousand, basically so it costs a lot of gold so gold is pretty hard to do uh, but yeah, you want to level up your characters. That sounds very rudimentary, but you absolutely need to do it. If you've got advancements, again, invest them in your characters if you got duplicates. One thing I will say is you may, which is what I'm doing here, you may want to wait for an event to roll around that typically they do these once every other week where it's a event centered around enhancing characters or things like that. So keep that in mind as well. So you can advance your, your characters. Uh, we go back to the hunters. You can also level up their skills. My skill recommendations, just in general, are going to be either the basic attack or the ultimate. You can also do this. This support skill here is what they do when they're used with Sung Jin in player mode. But when they're used in other content, the QTE skill is here too. Uh, you can invest in these if you want to as well. They're not the craziest thing on a lot of characters. It just kind of depends what the character is and what they do. But the ultimate, the basic, or whatever strong skill that they have that lends itself to their overall kit. Like, for example, I leveled this one here because this is his main skill for damage. Uh, the core attack also, again, one of the main things for him for damage. So it just kind of depends what the character is designed to do and what their focus is. For a character like Byung-Gu, you're not... I don't really think you have to level these skills too much. I mean, I, I leveled this one, but I don't think you really need to level these too much because he just has such a low modifier. He's just never going to actually do damage. And that's the only thing that really changes with the levels. It's just damage. And then the cooldown starts going up with some of these skills. It's literally just damage. The entire rest of this all is the exact same text. So... Uh, I might get booted because the game server just reset for... Okay, never mind. Okay, it literally is 5 p.m. So, just... so, you know, things like that. Very basic, but nonetheless, very useful. And as you see here, I have an R weapon on him. And again, with that, we are also getting the extra stat. But a cool thing about the, the R weapons here is when they're fully advanced, they can also increase the overall stats for attack, defense, and HP for these hunters. So that helps them too, in a way, uh, to obviously get stronger, do more overall. And they have their own, you know, precision, all that stuff. It's just they don't have the customization feature that Sung Janu has. So you can't really, in, you know, interact with it the same way. So the hunter weapons are kind of weird because you can't really go out of your way to say, I want to get their designated weapons right now. I don't know how they're going to allow us to get like the ones that they haven't allowed us to get yet outside of crafting they've given us three that one that one and this one 
But you have to craft all the other SSR ones, and we don't really have the materials to do that. I don't know if they're expecting us to do it ourselves, but kind of a weird thing. But yeah, I think the takeaway here is that our weapons are useful, especially if they feed into the character's kit. I really like Essence of Magic on him. There's an SR version of this that does basically the same thing, but this is a fully duped out one, uh, giving the extra power gauge increase and then extra 10% to the stats. So that overall is very useful for him. Now, I want to kind of move on from here and talk about other avenues to increase your overall power and ways that you can compete in content. So when you unlock Army of Shadows, you want to obviously keep a, keep an eye towards this. Level up your army level. That's one thing that you can do to improve your overall just shadows. And this these guys will help you a ton. Now, when you come here, you're going to want to unlock Tank, actually. Now, I would... I personally would like to unlock iron, but I'm going to unlock tank because the stun there is very strong. And then the extra utility for that, you know, extra couple seconds you get to do damage, things like that uh, from the stun on him could be very, very useful for you. Now, there's a lot of different other ways in here too to increase. Like when we take a look at the armory, armory is a stat that you don't actually really see represented, but when these, you don't get all six of these. You get, I think, three by default. You have to unlock the other three and it takes your six strongest SSR weapons into consideration. I've invested nothing in this yet, and it's here. And it gives a portion of their power to your total overall power. So when you take on a piece of content that's too strong for you, um, you get penalized basically for it. And so what happens is this anytime you're like taking on a piece of content that's like, you know, too strong for you, you have to consider this extra 12,000. It gets factored in. So if I take on a stage that's diff too difficult for me, I don't meet the requirement for total power recommendation. Um, it'll still be white instead of red if I'm within that 12,000 range. And this number obviously scales to whatever weapons you have. That's kind of the way that this one works in particular. So it's it's not directly making you stronger, directly making you do more damage, but it is a very vital piece to your ability to take on content because you're not dealing with the penalty and you have, again, more total overall stats anyway being invested into your team. So we go ahead and move on from here. And the next thing I want to kind of talk about is right here. It took a while, but we shuffled back to the Hunters page. And the reason why is because this is, this was actually funnily enough, going to be the first thing I talked about, but I started just talking about general stuff that people will know, but not everyone will know. So for you guys that made it through to the end of the video, you're really dedicated because you probably knew the stuff I mentioned earlier and I really appreciate your support. So again, hit that thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. So there are a number of characters that do utility stuff, such as reducing defense, improving your attack, making the opponent take more damage, blah, blah, blah. I want to highlight some of those characters here today. First up is Min Byung-gu, uh, support character. He's kind of cool, actually, his design. I, I talked about how he does no damage, but that's the only thing I really can knock him for. I think he's awesome in terms of the way he's designed. Uh, so if we go over here, we take a look at his skills. I really like him with that first dupe, especially that first dupe, because with that first dupe, all team members' critical hit rate and critical damage increased by 8% and increased to 12% for light team members. So light team members get 12% instead of 8. Uh, and obviously, in this game, you're going to use a lot of mono-colored or mon mono-element teams, like full light, full fire, blah, blah, blah. I've actually been experimenting a little bit lately with mixing up. You don't have to do it that way in terms of running full light or whatever, but that's still nice, especially going to be nice in the future when we get more light element hunters as well that you can apply that to his ultimate is really strong i really like power gauge reduction on him i actually might switch the sets around to the ultimate set uh in terms of artifacts i think a lot of hunters have a lot of different artifacts that work well for them and i was testing this one because he it, it's more of a damage set but he goes based off of critical hit rate or crit damage is excuse me but i think i would change this set to the ultimate set so he can use the ultimate more consistently because his ultimate's really strong uh, and what it does here is it applies the heavenly blessing effect to the entire team. And then when he's disguised, it applies the critical damage increase to the entire team. So notice I just mentioned the critical stuff. So basically his ultimate gives the entire team critical hit rate and then critical hit damage equal to 40% of his amount that exceeds his basic critical hit damage. So basically he gives them crit hit rate, crit hit damage. <laughs> he also, if we come over here, he gives allies recovery, which is really, really good. And it also is increased by 100% when he's in disguise, which I believe is when he first switches in. Uh, yeah, when he first switches in, that's really, really strong. Uh, also, right down here, he does punishment, which is also strong. If he's disguised, the punishment is stronger, so they take 15% more damage. So Byungu is actually really, really, really awesome. 
as a character to plug in as your third to make your other two characters just one way or another ultimately do more damage. I wanted to also highlight more characters like Lee Bora here. She, I think, is kind of interesting. I'm not as well versed with her or her kit, but I think she's kind of fun to use. So she's got a crit focus, but it's mainly for herself, as you see here. The main trick to her is that she does the charm thing, and that's pretty much it. So I don't want to say that's it because, like, you know, there was any debuffs in the area where the skill lands, creates the enhancement circle, increases dark elemental damage by 10% for team members standing in the circles. That's strong. On a full dark team, if they're within the circle, it's a pretty big circle. They get extra damage if they're a dark character. Increases magic arrow damage of phantom foxes by 20% and changes to penetration attack. So she herself is more of a damage dealer that has support utility. And then as you see here, that's the arrow attack. Uh, and then she has the... Ch Was that the charms actually itself right there? Or is it going to be this one? I think it's this one. Yeah, the charms. So this is when she's with Sung Jinu. Uh, when the skill hits, it applies a charm effect. And when the skill hits, it removes debuff zones in the area. Charm is another skill where they take increased damage. Increased damage taken by 15%. We see her QTE. Again, she also does the charms here. So this is really easy to activate. She's gonna. She puts you in a position where the enemy is almost always taking extra damage damage excuse me and then if you're using her alongside a top end dps like the new beck yunho uh she is going to also spike his damage because he's a dark type hunter as well so she's extremely strong as a support especially for your dark type teams and i really really like her utility and then we want to also mention kang again extremely strong uh damage dealer bleed dealer blah 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 so she's awesome too I want to highlight uh, the other Beck Yoon Ho, who's, uh, I actually just took a set off, so he fell down very, very, very far. Who's interesting? He's an interesting damage dealer. He's mainly like a breaker. He's one of the best breakers in the game. Heavy break, medium break here. Uh, he, he does uh, light break there, but that's fine. And then right here, another medium break. But he, on the QTE and the special skill for support with Janu, he decreases the enemy's defense. So that's very, very strong too. So obviously, actually not on the QTE, just there and then on the skill here, right? One of these skills. Where is it? Is it on the ultimate? Yeah, okay. I was like, it's on one of the skills. Okay. And then on the ultimate, he reduces the enemy's defense. So that's really strong, too, for your overall team's damage output, just reducing their defense. And then right here, defense decreased by 20% for 10 seconds. Uh, so the, he gets that here by default in the passive. I was like, I know it's somewhere else here. So just doing that is really, really strong. And there are other hunters. You just kind of got to go through and see what they're doing. But those are some that I really wanted to highlight that can really help take your team to the next level through ways of making your team output more damage. There are other hunters that do other utility things like her, where she's freezing all over the place, which is obviously extremely strong utility, uh, breaking all over the place on other characters. You've got healing slash support slash break with this guy all over the place with, uh, with Jin Ho. You've got shields here and breaking. Like You just got to kind of go through the characters. But... In terms of increasing your overall power and damage, things like that, we covered pretty much every way in the game right now to do all of those things. So if this video was helpful for you, be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. I'll see you all next time.